Hey you guys! So do you have any paper for Halloween that you still haven't gotten around to using yet? Because I did. I had this paper by American Crafts called Nightfall and I just love it. It's one of my favorite Halloween collections that I've ever seen and I had a lot of fun working with it. So I'm going to show you how to put together some of these really cute items and I think my favorite part of this kit is the treat cones, which are really fun because you can make them as simple or as complex as you want. Like you could just make them plain with really cute paper and they'll be really cute. Or if you want, you can follow some of my design ideas, like my little candy corn that I did. And the funnest part is putting these really cute little ribbons on the side and some embellishments on it. So when you're using coordinated paper, you can really throw like any of the papers together and it's going to be really cute because it already matches. So the other one that I did has this little boo element down the front and some little cute things on the side and loving the ribbon. Or you can also make it as a cute little bat. And these would be cute to hang on like a doorknob of someone's room or on a little tree or just wherever, really anywhere. So my other favorite part of this kit is the cute little cauldron, which we have filled up with a bunch of candy here. And it's actually heavy, but it's really sturdy and it's really staying together because it's glued together in so many different places and it's got two layers here. So it's cool when it's empty and you kind of like you grab it, it's not flopping around at all. It's really sturdy. So I'm going to show you how that goes together. It's not hard and it's really fun to do some embossing on these pieces before you glue them on. Because I actually have some Halloween embossing folders, which I have never used. So I enjoyed that, but you could totally use any folder at all and it will look really cute. So these little guys are really fun to make and put around the house in little unexpected places. They make really cute decorations and it's something fun that you can do with a little tiny pumpkin. I definitely have a lot of these little pumpkins around the house because I can't resist when I see them at little stores for sale and we also grew some in our garden this year. And when I say we, I mean Leo actually did all the work. So these paints I got when I was at Michael's and I wanted to just get a regular black paint which is what worked. That's, that's what I would recommend for painting the pumpkin, just any kind of acrylic craft paint. It's like a dollar at Michael's. Um, I was also really tempted to get these two glitter paints which I thought that I could just paint right onto the pumpkin and it would be like black glitter right away. But actually these need to go on top of black paint. So if you want to do the glitter, you're going to have to paint it black first and then add the glitter. So in addition to all this fun stuff, I also included candy wrappers, which although they're simple, they're embellished cute, but the, the base of each of them is basically a rectangle, which although it's simple, the cool part is that it's already sized perfectly to fit most of the popular fun size candy bars like specifically different ones. So in your download, you get all the information for whether you want to make just one or whether you want to make as many as will fit on your mat. So after all your trick-or-treating fun is said and done, you can scrapbook a nice big five by seven picture of your fun. And I had a lot of fun using all these different pattern papers from this collection. So like I was saying before, no matter what paper you're working with, if it coordinates, you're going to have a lot of fun pulling it all together on any of these projects. So I've got a couple more little tips and tricks up my sleeve to show you. So let's sit down and get started. So here are all the pieces cut out for my treat cone. And this is the body of the cone. And these are the two sides and the little front. So what you're going to do after you have it cut out is just put a little bit of glue along this tab here and fold it around and glue it in place just like this. So obviously the front goes right on the center and the front there and the sides go right on the sides. And now through these little holes here, you can either put a piece of wire or a piece of ribbon. And I've done wire through mine. If you're going to use wire, you can really use any gauge of wire. I used a semi thick one. I don't know the exact number, but when you put it through on the inside, just loop it around and then twist it around itself so that it doesn't come through. And I think it's kind of cool if your wire is a little messy and kind of wrinkled up a little bit. So you could either leave it plain or you can have a lot of fun adding some really cute little ribbons. Like I used this really cool black rose type of ribbon, which is by American Crafts, which I actually got at Archivers. 
And I used a hot glue gun underneath because it's so like, there's so much to it that you really don't want to mess around with regular glue if possible. And then I found this cool ribbon at my local scrapbooking store, which I also used hot glue to put on. And then on the side, I added some cute other little ribbons. I tied a piece of this fishnet stuff on there and just glued some more buttons and stuff. And then this, I just let hang kind of long, which I like the effect of. So it's a lot of fun to play around with your ribbons on this one. So finally, if you want to make the little bat guy, he's pretty much the same except that he comes with these little wings and his eyes are a little different. But I left off the ribbon on the top because I wanted to keep it obvious that it's a bat, but I put the fun ribbon just on the side. I tied it in some knots and some bows and that will be really fun to fill up with some candy. So this is the paint that I picked up at Michael's and it's actually glossy, which I like the effect of, but a regular matte finish would be perfect too. And another side note about this plaid brand, it says it's actually made in the USA, which I think is really cool. So if I wanted to use one of these glitter paints, I would have to do that on top of the paint that I already have on there, which I haven't done, but maybe I'll add that later if I'm feeling crafty later. So you're just going to go ahead and pour your paint in a little container, plastic, ceramic, whatever. I picked all these up at Michael's in the same aisle right with the paints, and these two are just generic, and this is by the brand Craft Smart, and that was actually my preferred choice just because, I don't know, they're just nice and neat, and uh, really anything is going to work. And I've never painted craft paint on a pumpkin, even though I've seen it done in magazines a lot. But it was really quick and really simple, and it really only took one coat of paint, so it's a lot of fun. So this is definitely a fun little project to do with your kids. As long as you keep it pretty clean, just put down some, some scratch paper underneath the paint, obviously. And if you get these nicer brushes, be sure and wash them right away so you can use them again and again. So once you've got your pumpkin painted and all dry, you can go ahead and glue your little eyes on the front. And then you've got all eight of your legs. And the sizing instructions come with your download as to what size to cut these out at. And you're going to just go ahead and fold the end over. Not the side that has the little foot on it, but just the straight one. You're just going to bend it up a little bit and take your hot glue gun or your regular craft glue, but I think hot glue is going to work a little better, and just put a tiny little dot on there. And then you want the foot to be even with the ground, so just kind of place it where you see the foot is also touching the ground and hold it for a second while it dries. And then just go ahead and repeat the same thing with the rest of the legs, four on each side. So here's your finished spider and it's going to be a lot of fun to put this in an unexpected place like by the TV or in the kitchen or even in the bathroom. So have fun with that one. So here are all the pieces for my cauldron and there are two of these pieces which form the body of the cauldron and this part is the bottom. These little tabs go on the inside for some reinforcement and there's 12 of these pieces which I've already embossed and they go around the side. So first you are going to put some glue on this little tab and glue him in place and then also put some glue on this little tab and glue that in place also. So I'll just put a tiny little dot of glue and also on this one. And hold it in place while it dries. And hold this one also in place while it dries. And then I'm going to go ahead and repeat that all the way down the line on this piece and also on the next piece, which is the same. So go ahead and repeat that all the way down the strip and as you can see, it kind of bends out unexpectedly, which forms the, the lip of the cauldron. And as long as you just hold it while it dries, it's going to be good. And it's actually okay that I've got a little bit of glue sticking out here, because at the end, my final step is going to be to glue this tab over, which will hide any tabs or messy glue. So go ahead and repeat that all the way down here, gluing these tabs down. So here are my two pieces, which I have just finished gluing. And now next, I'm going to 
do the same thing near the bottom and I'm going to flip this over. I'm going to put glue on this little tab and glue that in place and I'm going to do the same thing all the way around and I'm going to do the same thing to the other piece. So I'll just put a tiny thin strip of glue and line it up and hold it in place while it dries. And as you can see, there's a little slit right here, and that's because the next step we have will be to glue this on the inside for reinforcement. So just finish putting glue on these long, thin tabs and go all the way around. Okay, so here are my two pieces, and my next step, like I said, is going to be to take these little tabs and glue them on the inside where you kind of see some light coming through. If I look at it from the other side, it's right here. So just go ahead and take this and put glue on it and glue them in all those places. All right, so I've got my little tabs on the inside of both of my pieces. And next, I'm going to put glue on these tabs and glue one piece to the other. So I'm just going to go, I'm going to put glue on all the tabs, but I'm going to put them in place one at a time and hold them one at a time as they dry. So I'm just starting with the bottom one. I'm going to hold it in place while it dries. And then once it's got a good hold, I'll move on to the next one and the next one. So my cauldron is starting to take shape here. And now the next step is going to be to glue all these tabs over to form a nice finished edge. So as I was gluing around the side, I actually used some clothespins to hold them in place while they dried. So if you want to do that, it's a nice little tip. And next, I'm going to just flip my cauldron over and put glue all the way around here and then just glue the bottom right in place just all at once and just kind of scooch it around while it's drying to get it in the perfect spot. So finally, just take your 12 pieces like this, which I've already embossed, which is a nice touch, and go ahead and put glue here and here and then hold it in place here and hold it in place down here. Just hold it while it dries and then go ahead and put the rest of them on. So here is your finished cauldron, super cute, and I had a lot of fun adding some nice black ribbon around the edge. And I also added some cute little buttons, and I put some bling on top of the button here. And this bling I got at my local scrapbooking store, just some cute, like, cauldron-y looking bling. And it's a lot of fun. We actually stuffed this whole thing full of candy. and. It's really sturdy. I'm actually like squeezing it. I'd have to squeeze it pretty hard to even like dent it. So it's a lot of fun. Have fun with this one. And if you make it, I would love to see it on our forum or on our Facebook wall. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time and happy crafting.